on this sneaky dirty devil. How did you just sprout up like that? Dirty devil, look at you. Here we go. This is one of my front grasses, Sir Grain Joysia. It's potentially my favorite. What I will say about it, I don't know how well it'll show up on camera. You can see very quickly when it needs water. Like any grass, you know, it starts to wilt a bit, gets that sort of gray color about it. I find if you don't get the water on this very quickly, when it gets to that point, because it is a uh, slower growing grass, um, it can be a little bit slower to recover. So I'm gonna throw some water on it now, because you don't want it to get like that. I might even cut this back today and uh, give it some water, see how long it takes for it to bounce back. Now, I have no irrigation out the front here, so everything gets hand watered. I do enjoy watering the lawn. It's just when you can't get to it that it becomes a bit of a task, but I really do. Who doesn't enjoy watering the lawn? So satisfying. So I'm just gonna do this, then pack up the Azito mower. Gonna do one of my semi-regular clients, which will be a good test for that mower, because it goes pretty quick. Always handy when you can knock over a mower test and one of your clients in one go. I have a sneaking suspicion. I'm not sure how much it's grown, but I've got a sneaking suspicion that it might not get through on the two batteries that it's got. So I will have a backup mower there just in case. I could be wrong, it might not be that long and thick. I'll finish watering here and then we'll go and check. Hopefully we have that special guest coming today. Uh, they've had some dramas getting here a couple of times. Hopefully they're coming today and I can let you know uh, about some services that you can use if you purely just enjoy mowing the lawn, you don't wanna do all the other stuff. I mean, you're still gonna have to irrigate, but I'm talking about fertilizers, insecticides, there are other options for you. I just forgot I got another mini mail time. And it's very appropriate to uh, the task I'm doing now. Now, part of the reason that I hand irrigate is I have a hose link. All of my sprinkler fittings are the traditional ones. The hose link have a different style. Put it in, twist it. They're pretty good. Um, but yeah, I wasn't able to use my traditional fittings until now. I bought this off there website. I think it was about 10 bucks plus about eight bucks postage or something. So it was about 17 or 18 dollars delivered. Not exactly cheap, but that's what happens when you buy one little item. Um, so yeah, that goes on there. This hooks up, screws onto that. And then we can use our sprinkler. And we are very lucky here. We have, oh, you can't really see it, but recycled water. And what that means is they take all the waste water uh, it goes to a treatment facility, then gets sent back to us in different lines. We've got a, a normal clean line and then we've got a recycled line. But yeah, this is what we use to irrigate the lawns. You don't wash your cars or anything with it ideally. I mean, you could, but I don't think they recommend it. But it doesn't make you feel so guilty for watering the lawn. I just got an email from a Bonnie. Thank you for the email, Bonnie. Um, she was talking about my magnolia trees, which we have three. She counted them correctly. Now, I definitely don't profess to be a gardener. I am not. She did bring up the fact that they are next to the driveway and these can grow quite large and destroy driveways with their roots and that sort of stuff. I did get back to her. I believe these are the teddy bear magnolias, so they don't grow as big as a, as a full magnolia. Um, so hopefully that makes a difference. It may not, I don't know. She also offered some advice about my pittosporum, which I need to replace. That one there that died due to the drainage. She said to build the base up a bit which is great advice. I've probably planted it too low. So I do actually get a lot of advice um, in my comments and emails uh, that I do use. Because at the end of the day, I don't know much. I'm just some dude that cuts grass. I enjoy cutting grass. I generally have my own yard looking nice. I'm no expert. So thanks, Bonnie. Now this may look a little extreme, <laughs> and it probably is. I do wear one of these GVSP3 masks. I suffer pretty bad from hay fever. I take antihistamines and wear a mask while I'm mowing and that seems to keep on top of it. A P3 is pretty extreme for that. Um, the reason I like this mask is it's rubber. Now you could go for something like this. This is what I used to wear, the RZ masks, which have a filter inside them like that. If you're just doing some light gardening at home, that is not a bad option for you if you are a hay fever sufferer. What I found with those over using them for a couple of years though, as soon as it gets super hot and sweaty like it is today, um, these filters, they get drenched in the sweat and then when the filter's drenched in sweat, breathing in becomes really, really laborious and you can get to the point where it's really labored breathing. So 
Good mask to combat that. I used to just rotate. I had three or four of them and I'd just rotate them. Yeah, I then tried out this GVSP3 and like I said, it's rubber. So um, the sweat isn't an issue for it. They also have, I don't know, Ellipse Integra. I don't know if that's the full name, but it's like a combination of some safety glasses with the mask. Like it's, it's all built together. It definitely hasn't been made for um, gardeners or lawnmowers, but um, I wanna give it a try today simply because it's very, very hot and sweaty out there today and that's the best environment to test this thing in to see if it will work for me in any scenario. The benefit here is um, your eyes are kind of gasketed because this molds around your, your face. So not only are you not you know, breathing in anything, nothing's getting in your eyes, pollen wise or, again, absolute overkill, I know. I'm not saying it's for anyone, but I'm always keen to try anything out. It does look really extreme. The eye protection part of it is meant to be anti-fog and anti-scratch, I believe. So I don't know how it'll hold up in this weather though. This, um, it's very, very sticky out there. But I'll give it a go today anyway. I do get a lot of comments, a lot of negative comments for wearing these, but at the end of the day, it enables me to be able to do this stuff every day. Even when I previously do my lawns at home, um, I'd do it and then the next few days I would just be suffering massively from um, hay fever. So whatever works for you, if you want to give them a try, RZ might be suitable for you. You know, in a more extreme situation, the uh, GVS might work for you. You don't have to worry as much about looking like a weirdo because I'm out here making viral videos normalizing this stuff. Again. Whatever works. So I did test the Ryobi 36 volt on this yard a couple of weeks ago. Kind of looks at first glance worse than it will be. It's quite thick. It really needs a, a ideally it needs a hard cut back. We're not going to be doing that today. We're just going to be taking the leaf off it. So the turf is buffalo. It's got quite a wide leaf. Fair bit of seed head on it at the moment. Now you can't grow grass from that. That is sterile seed by the way. I'll show you a few hopefully satisfying edges. So these modern blocks are more work than a lot of people think. They think it's just a small yard, tiny patches less work. The cleanup is the thing that takes more time though. Like with a, a larger yard, if you're doing a quarter acre block or something, you just get a big blower, blow all the clippings after um, edging back into their big yard and then you can vacuum them up with the mower. With the, all these smaller sections, these nature strips, you, you blow it from the road, it goes back onto the path and you blow it into their small front yard, but then it's near their doorway. You really, uh, you spend a lot of time finessing the clippings. And I'm not, I'm not, this isn't me complaining or anything, it's just me pointing out that I prefer to do those larger, older style blocks uh, than all these small patches. A lot of the time, if there's a lot of clippings and big clippings, I'll just use the rake um, and shovel to clear it up initially before blowing, just so there's less to blow around. But probably worth pointing out that none of the things or tips that I give you are really relevant to someone that's doing 10 or 15 lawns a day. If I was doing 10 or 15 lawns a day, I would go broke the way I do things. I get satisfaction out of the way that I do things. So yeah, doing things the way I do them doesn't really translate to uh, your average mower guy. I'm cutting these lawns to make satisfying videos, to test out equipment, to make review videos, and just to satisfy myself. So hopefully it helps. There we go. Front complete, let's head out the back. did do a third pass there, by the way, too. The inner perfectionist in me felt it just needed one more. 
All right, we've finally got a special guest here. How you going? Good, mate. How are you? Adam's got a business. What do you do? I grow lawn care. <laughs> <laughs> we do all the, the nitty gritty stuff, not the mowing, but yeah, uh, fungus spraying, insecticide spraying, weeds, obviously. Soil nutrition is probably the biggest one for us. Yeah. Um, you can slap down nitrogen as much as you want, but it's all about getting the soil to go. Yeah. Yeah, I guess the clients do their mowing and watering, but we advise on all that sort of gear as well. So. Well, that's what I've been doing with my Kaku out the back, basically masking it with nitrogen. It's been, <laughs> yeah. you know. It's a, good, it's a short fix. Yeah. yeah, but you know, I, um, you know, I could spray it myself or whatever, but I thought for people at home, I'm sure a lot of people don't realise that there's companies that come out and do all the stuff yeah, besides the, the mowing. Sort of stuff, yeah, because yeah. a lot of people do, you know, they're happy mowing, they're happy to do it. Yep. They don't want to play with all the other stuff. And even some, sometimes it's the case where they'll get us out, say, hey, we'll get you for a year. Yeah. Teach us what you know, um, recommend what you need to do. Yeah. And then they'll say, thanks, we'll take it from here. Okay. Um, but most of the clients are um, time poor, so they've got their own work to do. Um, own things to do they would just want someone else to look after it so they'll pay you to come and mow it me to come and do the specialty stuff so you you do it generally on a, a program sort of thing yeah, like yeah. what so a, year, is it monthly end. or uh, it works out every two months give yeah or take obviously weather is a big factor yeah um, yeah it works out roughly every two months we do quarterly as well um once a year normally in spring where we do all our insecticide sprays that sort yeah. of thing um that's a pretty big one as well. So yeah, it's kind of depends on your budget. And so you, you can want. do one-off stuff or you do the full works program yep, stuff. Yep, exactly. Okay. Depends on, on what you want to spend and what you do want to do and don't want to do. All right. Yeah. Well, we might start out the front here. I don't know if, um, so my Tiff Tough here, which is Cooch, I've, yep. well, obviously you know, um, I don't know if we had some dollar sport or some sort of fungus oh, or something yeah, here. Right. I haven't done anything to it for the last few weeks knowing that you were coming. I saw, yep. It, it was a week. It was a week away from being dead set perfect, and then I had this brick retaining wall done. Yep. I acid washed it, and oh, nice. we had some, um, you know, die off there. And then coming back, it just yeah, I feel like there's some sort of. What, what would you suggest? Yeah, it looks like old dollar spots. So yeah. The broad spectrum stuff we've got, we'll cover that as well. Okay. So any left, um, yeah, and plus all the nitrogen stuff we're going to put down. There's probably like three different types of actual nitrogen in there. Yeah. Um, so that'll help combat get the the um, nutrition back up. So we'll whack that down. Then how long do I have to leave it? Because I want to do a, a hot last height reset before the end of the season. Uh, just for today. So tomorrow you oh. go back to normal watering. Um, wow. Okay. Cutting, that sort of thing. Yeah, it works. It wow, that's works. super quick. Yeah, pretty pretty instantly. Yeah. All right, we'll go and have a look at the back. This is more the main issue. It's pretty ordinary out here. Uh, doesn't drain well. Uh, ever since I've had it, I put this Kaikuyu down. This center section there. Struggling. Yeah. So I, I left it knowing you were coming and gave it a bit of a, a cut yesterday. So it looks you know, a little bit um, scalped at the moment. With the humidity, and you can feel it in the air as well. I think every single lawn we did today on the way back from the mountains had some version of fungus in it. Just cause it's just been so wet. So you think that's what it is? Yeah, again, yeah. it looks like it's it's recovered actually a bit. Yeah, well, it was, it was worse. Yeah. And then I just left it for you know, probably a week just to grow and that. And then when I cut it yesterday, I'm like, oh, it doesn't actually look as bad as it was, but obviously it's still got that dead material in there, which... Yeah. That'll recover, that's yeah. Fungicides, generally speaking, they, they're good, but they're always short term. So yeah. the first thing we, we ask people, or especially your client or yourself, get us in for fungus issues is how often are you watering? And sure enough, it's like, oh, 15, 20 minutes, three times a yeah. day, every day. So it's just too little, too often. Yeah. And obviously, as you know, you know, you're better off doing one or two deep waters you know, 30 minutes plus, depending on the size of the land. Throwing, what, what are you going to throw down? So I'll do broad spectrum liquid um, fungicide for any dollar spot, leaf spot, you name it, that's still here. Yep. Um, that covers, it's something like 15 different funguses, so that's pretty good. Yeah. Um, then we've also got the granular microbes, which is, it's like sand, you can't even see it, but um, that basically systemically helps all the, the actual plants suck up um, the goodies that we're going to put down. Mm -hmm. So harden the leaf and actually stop the fungus getting into the leaf, which is kind of, yeah, the main goal. Good to hear. So yeah, that again, that's why I got you out here to let people know that because so many people don't want to play with that sort of stuff. I don't oh, even yeah. like playing and with it to be honest so with you. Like, so is another one. You can get stuff from the green shed, but um, yeah, a lot of it's commit like the stuff we buy is twenty liter drums. Yeah. Um, you do need a license to spray it, which we obviously up upkeep things every five years, EPA license, all that stuff. Yeah, because that all comes with it. Exactly. Um, so if haven't done it yet, but if something goes wrong, your lawn dies. We can redo it if we have to but i'd like to keep it that way <laughs> <laughs> good stuff all right record so far so let's keep it that way we'll let you get into it then so i will point out this isn't an ad either i did uh, ask him to come out and pay him um 
Adam's commented on my videos for a while, so we've spoken through the internet, and I just thought it was a good opportunity for me to get something done and to show you guys uh, what you can get done if you don't like playing with this sort of stuff. All right, so a lot of people won't know what a pre-emergent is. What are we uh, throwing in? Pre-emergent herbicide. So once this is watered in, it'll go into the soil, um, systemic, so the plant will, um, sorry, create a layer of um, herbicide in the soil, so it'll stop the Stops the weed from germinating, yeah. So it won't uh, get anything that's in there. Even small ones that have germinated won't get them, but it'll yep. stop, you know, clover or whatever that washes down from the neighbours. So you get your pre-emergent herbicides that are going to stop them from germinating, and then you've got your post-emergent ones, which are once it's already once it's popped, yep. yeah, popped out. So uh, you're going to throw some of that down for a scrape. Done. Easy. What cylinder? Oh, the old Scotty. Oh, of course. Of course. Yeah. yeah. All right. So we got the backpack on. Yep. The old spectrum liquid fungicide. Okay, beautiful. So you, you don't like the battery uh, pumps? There's nothing wrong with them. I haven't tried them yet. Oh, okay. But, um, I just thought until I get old and lazy enough to get one, <laughs> I'll keep <laughs> keep the manual one. But um, yeah. You were just saying first question you get with this stuff: is it safe for you? Every, kids, everything and in the pets. van is, is it safe for kids and pets. Um, one to try. Kids and pets, generally, that's safety point for me. Yeah. Generally speaking, once it's dry, yeah, unless yeah. you get cooch mite or something really nasty where you need like abamectin or a Schedule 7, um, we'll always call the client first. Okay. And if it means coming back, so be it. Yeah. Um, yeah, don't want to kill a dog or anything. <laughs> <laughs> that's not ideal. <laughs> We're all done here. Hopefully, we won't have any dramas ongoing. <laughs> Things Appreciate well. you coming, mate. No worries. All right. Cheers. While we're doing some uh, lawn and garden maintenance stuff, I might spray some of my hedges with this Envy stuff, which is meant to help with uh, sunburn and windburn, all that sort of stuff. We've had a couple of hot days now, and I've noticed a bit of uh, burn on the leaf, so try and prevent them from being destroyed. Now, this is another product that I found out about just after I made a video asking people what's the best solution for burn on the leaf. Yeah, see, we've got a little bit of leaf burn there, which is what we're trying to avoid. I don't know how this works or even how well it works, but we're going to give it a try. Now, these need a bit of a trim, but that new growth is particularly susceptible. All right, it is 2.30. Uh, my days are different now. School holidays are over, so I'm going to do early school pickup a lot of the days. We're about to do the draw now for the cooling towels. And the squincher, 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 squincher. If you win, it's Facebook. If I win, it's YouTube. YouTube's won three out of three. So the Facebook people are getting felt, well, the Facebook people are feeling a little left out. So we have a different, this is a paper rock person. Hopefully for the Facebook people, she will prevail. All right, ready? <laughs> oh, Facebook wins, finally. Okay, you gotta scroll. Scroll down, scroll up, scroll around like a lot, lot of times, and then look for someone that's commented Prime. Prime qualifies. Tiago Dos Santos, you are the winner, and you're a top fan, so that's a cool thing. Send me an email at timthelawnmowman at gmail.com. Now, this is the only way I announce winners. I don't just randomly go in the comments and tell people they've won. There's a few scammers around, so just be aware of that. Going out tomorrow to film a Fremo Fridays. We will vlog the day as well. I've got a camera guy coming out to do it. I don't know if it'll work, but um, that'll be nice to beat him, see how we go. Thank you for watching Vlog 21.